what does it take to get selected for Colonel? Hi, I'm Chuck, the bureaucrat, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to review a paper by Lieutenant Colonel Joe Snell that looks at what it takes to get selected to Colonel. Now, this paper is a little dated and it focuses on the active guard and reserve population. So when we get to the end of this video and I show you a calculator to estimate the probability that you'll get selected, bear that in mind. But by the time we get there, I think you'll see how the author has illuminated some aspects that are important and often overlooked. Okay, so what Snell did here is he looked at promotion board packets that went before the 2009, 10, and 11 promotion selection boards. There were 1144 packets, and for each packet he had 59 variables. And then what he did is he built models in an attempt to outperform what he called conventional wisdom. Don't get too technical. Logistic regression lets us predict the probability of something like promotion happening. Nobody cares. Now, according to Snell, Conventional wisdom holds that there's five factors that influence whether or not someone's going to get selected for colonel. That is, completion of senior service college, whether or not they've deployed, completion of a master's degree, battalion command, and having 75% or more of their OER evaluations above center of mass. To see whether or not he could build a better model, Snell considered age, gender, race, marital status, time on station, security clearance, percent of ratings from general officers, highest award, whether they're airborne qualified, whether they needed taped for height weight, the list just goes on and on. The model that Snell settled on has eight variables. And what's interesting about these is how they agree with the conventional wisdom, in some cases slightly disagree, and what they include that the conventional wisdom doesn't include. First, you got the things where they agree. Senior service college, a master's degree, and battalion command. But when it came to deployment, Snell found that it was the length of your longest deployment that mattered, not whether you've deployed at all. And when it came to the above center of mass measure, Snell used the percent of OERs that were above center of mass. He didn't use a hard threshold like the conventional wisdom. And then Snell found three variables that were outside of the conventional wisdom but seemed to impact selection. The first one was zone of consideration. All things being equal, people in their primary zone have a significant advantage. He included age because getting older doesn't seem to help and he included the number of lieutenant colonel ratings, more being better. Now, for those of you who have seen my career map video, you're probably not going to be surprised that Joe Snell and I collaborated on the development of that, and that a lot of the things that are in there are influenced by his analysis. When I say you want to get your master's degree as a major, it's because you want that master's degree, but you don't want to sacrifice a lieutenant colonel rating to get it. When I say that you want to be getting top-notch Lieutenant Colonel OERs the moment you get promoted to Lieutenant Colonel, it's because we're trying to drive up that percentage of above center of mass ratings. When I say you want the best possible packet when you go before your primary zone selection board, that's because Snell's model finds a huge negative effect for people who are above the zone. And then there's a couple of things that this analysis says to me. For instance, if you're considering a deployment, uh, I might steer away from a four-month deployment that guarantees a lukewarm OER, especially if you're a lieutenant colonel. Now, when it comes to age, there's not much you can do about that, but I've always kind of felt that the way age works in this model is to offset the positive effect of more lieutenant colonel ratings. That is, that there's an interaction going on between the number of ratings you accumulate and your age. And it isn't actually age that puts you at a disadvantage. Now, there is one thing where Snell and I never really came to agreement, and that has to do with senior service college. You'll notice that both the conventional wisdom and his model treat completion of senior service college as the factor that matters. But I've always felt that it's selection to senior service college that matters and not the completion itself. 
Now, to be fair, Snell didn't have selection data, so he couldn't include it in his analysis. But I'll explain in a future video why I think this is true. Well, I promised you a calculator from this paper, so let's take a look at this thing. Suppose we've got a 45-year-old lieutenant colonel in their primary zone. Now, they got a 12-month deployment, they got a master's degree, they've completed senior service college, but they have not done battalion command. And in addition to that, they've got four OERs, but only two of them are top block. This guy is gonna have about a 54% chance of being selected, which isn't bad because in this population, only about 25% of the packets were selected. Now, let's suppose that he gets one more OER before the board, and it's a top block. That gives him a nice boost, but suppose he doesn't get that fifth OER in time for his primary zone board, and instead he gets passed over. Now that extra OER shows up on his above the zone board. Yikes! <laughs> Hopefully you can see how these things start to matter. So listen, I'm Chuck. I want you to succeed. I certainly want you to be competitive. So if you're interested, come on this journey with me. And what I'll do is I will share the tools I've learned to help you deliver better results so that you can get better ratings.